Hello and welcome to CNN Business Traveller. I'm Richard Quest. This month reporting from the Flight Gallery at the Science Museum here in London. Around me is a delectable array of aviation relics. This is the perfect place for us to take a moment and look back at the world of aviation and the way we've covered business travel over the past few years. So on this month's show, it's the very best of Business Traveller. We look back at safety in the air, behind the scenes at the airport, and head to head, earning our stripes. And this is where it all began, the Wright Brothers Flyer in 1903. It took a century to go from this canvas and wooden structure through the flying boats, the jet engine, to the behemoths that we have today with the A380, the super jumbo, which had its inaugural flight from Singapore to Sydney in 2007. We were on board to see the whale usher in a new age. The plane may have been delivered two years late, but we took off bang on time from Singapore. Let's put the A380's size into perspective. Compared to a Boeing 747-400, the A380 is five metres taller. Nearly four metres longer is the same length as seven and a half London buses all in a row. It has an awesome wingspan of 79.8 metres. That's 18 metres wider than the 747. And the plane is certified to carry more than 800 people. So there's lots of space for airlines to play with. And Singapore Airlines is the first to show how this extra room can be put to use. Well, the first thing to mention is it does feel a bit more roomy. There is a few extra inches of legroom. When you recline, because the seat is thinner and has been constructed more differently, it doesn't just go back, it slides out. So even me at six foot two can sit here just about cross my legs without bashing the lady in front. What do you think of the economy you section? The new business class seats on the A380 are in many ways a quantum leap from that which has been seen before. Just take a look. It's a one, two, one configuration. No ridiculously complicated machinery. It just folds down quickly and easily. As I move up towards the nose, it becomes clear it takes a lot of people to make this plane fly. One person particularly. How heavy was this plane on takeoff? Uh, we were at 468 tons today. Not very heavy. This plane can take off with 569 tons. And the four engines, how much fuel are they sipping as we're going along? We are at this moment uh, burning about 12,000 kilograms of fuel total, four engines. 12,000 kilograms per hour. 12,000 kilograms, kilograms per, per hour. hour. So that is about 15,000 liters. How many times have you actually flown this plane? with a full load of passengers at the back? This is the first day. This is the first day on the 380 where I have so many passengers on board this flight. Before today, it was either empty aircraft. We trained on the aircraft. There was even no seat in the cabin. Just bare wires. At the very front, just behind where the captain sits, are the luxury first-class suites with the now famous double beds. Some had spent thousands of dollars buying their tickets to a charity auction. How much did you all have to pay for your tickets? Uh, 1,500 US. Yeah. 1,500 US. <laughs> it soon became clear. In economy, some had got a bargain. We paid 15,000 US for the two seats. The question then becomes, was it worth it? Are you kidding? Of course. It's an atmosphere that I, I don't think you'll ever feel again on an aircraft. Yeah. The most expensive seat cost $100,000, but that wasn't a seat. It was one of the first class suites. Julian Haywood spent that much money to be on board. Well, it's a chance to be uh, in a small piece of aviation history. 
Uh, it's, it's a chance to give to three excellent charities, um, and it's a chance to experience this. It's the atmosphere today is turbocharged. It's, it's fun. Bad weather in Sydney meant we never saw the famous Opera House and Harbour Bridge as we came into land. But that didn't matter, really. We had just flown into the history books. The A380, which has been in the news because of problems with the Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engines, which have had to be modified. Talking of engines, look at these exhibition models. It shows the complexity of the aircraft engine that is built for safety and reliability. And talking of safety, everything in aviation is designed and geared to ensure safe transportation, from the engines under the wing through to the crew in the cabin, who learn about techniques and routines for evacuation and safety procedures, as we discovered. We've come to Crane Bank outside London, home to the British Airways Flight Training Centre, used by all of the airline's 3,000 pilots and 15,000 members of cabin crew. Here, they train and refresh their knowledge of the Safety Equipment Procedures, or SEPs. The expertise and equipment is available to companies and business travellers on specially designed safety courses. In the event of landing on water, Remove the life jacket from its container and pull it over your head. Pass the tapes around your waist and tie them securely in a double bow at the side. After an introduction in the classroom, this is where the course really begins, in a simulator, embarking on what feels like any other flight. We know something is about to happen. We're all eyes and ears. Thank you for your attention. This is the captain. This is an emergency. Right. The course doesn't just go through the important well, basics, nice it's a hands-on right, experience. So Port head through hole. First and foremost, remember this is purely for training. You would never do this inside an aircraft. You would only inflate this outside the aircraft. Uh, but could you read out the instruction on that tab? Jerk to inflate. Jerk to inflate. We learned how to open the overwing emergency exits correctly. It is heavy. And with the adrenaline that you might have, you would, you're meant to throw it over the leading edge of the wing, but there's been cases in point uh, where people have thrown it lengthways and cleared the wing. Not bad, but what happens when there's a full row of people in the way? Now, suddenly, this becomes a lot more challenging, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Easy for him to do. As you're just taxiing onto the gate, you'll hear the call, cabin crew doors to manual. We're making the doors safe. What's the other call you hear? Cabin crew doors to automatic. That's just as you leave the gates, as you're departing on your journey, yeah? And they're going to arm the door, so if the door is opened, the slide will fire. That's it, just go. So now we know what cabin crew doors to automatic actually means. Well done. If we ever get to the aircraft doors before the cabin crew, we'll also know what to do.